Hello, everyone. <laughs> Can you hear me in back? Yep. Good, good. Uh, my name is Fyodor from Insecure.org and the MMAP project. I'm here with NMAP's co-maintainer, David Fifield. I'd like to thank you all for coming and, of course, DEF CON for having me. I've been going to DEF CON for 12 years and it's one of my favorite conferences. Uh, basically, I don't think there's really anywhere else in the world that you get such a concentration of smart people, passion for technology, and energy as you do at DEF CON. There's also the parties as well. <laughs> so I think I'm going to start out this presentation uh, with a couple questions for the audience that will help us give us an idea of how much introductory material we need to cover. Could I get a show of hands for anyone here who has heard of and used the NMAP security scanner? <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we'll definitely skip NMAP for dummies then. What about a little harder question? Who has used a newer feature on NMAP, the NMAP scripting engine? Okay. Well, we've got at least a third of you, maybe a half. That's great. And for those who haven't, I, we're going to really show the highlights and features of the NMAP scripting engine and maybe we'll be able to inspire you to give it a try. I want to mention that all of the <laughs> oops. Cancel, cancel, cancel. <laughs> Evil hackers in this room. I think we'll take wired, please. All right. So these uh, features that we're going to show are all available in NMAP version 5.35 DC1, the DEF CON release we made earlier this month, and also in 5.35 DC18 for some of the newer ones, which is our latest subversion repository code. So let's get started. The slides are kind of cut off on the left a bit, but I'm hoping that none of that will be so critical and we'll be able to work around it. So I'm going to start with just a little outline so you know what we're going to cover in this talk. First, we're going to give a quick introduction to the NMAP scripting engine, what it is, how to use it, why we built it. And then we're going to actually give you a demo to show you uh, the power of the NMAP scripting engine. And we're going to do that by a large scale scan of more than a million IPs of a major corporation. We're going to hide this panel. Okay, so after we show you the large scale demo, we're going to then go into taking the next step and actually writing your own NSE scripts and how to do that. And then David has a really great demo to really demonstrate the ease of writing an NSE script by writing one from scratch right in front of you, in front of 500 people. And uh, <laughs> hopefully he doesn't have any syntax errors. <laughs> so then after that, uh, we'll do the final notes and then we'll move to the Q&A room for the questions and answers. So the NMAP scripting engine is one of NMAP's most powerful and flexible features. It allows users to write and share simple scripts that they can use to automate networking tasks from enhanced network discovery to vulnerability detection or even exploitation. And the good news is you don't have to write all these scripts yourself. NMAP ships with a library of 131 NSE scripts which already can handle a wide variety of tasks. I feel that NSE really completes NMAP scanning mission. We already had host discovery where NMAP scans the networks and tries to find the machines that are up and available. We had OS detection where NMAP would figure out what operating system those machines are running. We had port scanning followed by version detection in order to find all the services there, what application and version numbers they're running. And then NSE is basically the glue that binds all of this knowledge together about the network. You can use it to interrogate the hosts in pretty much any way you desire. We're going to look at an example on this slide. I don't know if you can read it in the back, but we're going to go over what it says anyhow. 
Basically, here we're doing a scan of a machine, scanme.nmap.org. That's one I run for the purpose of people testing their nmap, make sure it's working well. And basically, you'll find out in this talk that I'm not really shy about scanning other people's machines. And so I feel it's only fair to provide one of my own that people can use to scan me back. We're also giving the capital A option, which tells nmap to use its advanced features, such as OS detection, version detection, and the nmap scripting engine. And then we get these results. Now most of it is going to be familiar to typical nmap users, regular nmap users. But I want to highlight the nmap scripting engine results from this. First we have the under SSH, the SSH host key script, which just grabs the cryptographic key hash that the server uses to identify itself. And while that might be useful for, say, a script that you would use to scan the network and find bogus keys that could be indicative of an attack or Trojan SSH, what I like to use it for is machines, a form of unique identification that is independent of IP address. So say I'm scanning a machine, I find one, I'm really interested into it, maybe I manage to brute force some passwords, the next day I try to get into it further, but it's gone, maybe it's, used, it's a DHCP client, it could have changed address to anything else. Well, with SSH host key, what I do is scan the network again and try and find that key. Similarly, if I'm doing a big scan and I see a bunch of machines that seem to be configured similarly, are those really different machines or is it just one machine with a bunch of IP aliases? Well, with host key script, that's a good way to figure it out. You'll also see some scripts below the HTTP port. We've got HTML title, which is a super simple script which just grabs the root web page from a web server and tells you the title. Very easy to do but useful information in the context of a scan. Uh, we also have HTTP methods, which basically says what methods does this server support? Git, post, whatever. In this case it says the trace method is potentially a little bit risky. Here's a URL you can use to find out more. If it had like the delete method or the put method, then it would be sounding even bigger alarm bells. So the nice thing is that with NSE, it puts the results down here by the port or host that they related to, so you can see them all in one place. Now I mentioned that we already have a library of scripts here. Is this zoomed enough that you guys can read it in the back? Yes? Good deal. So this script, uh, we have 131 of them and I'm certainly not going to go through them all right now, but I want to mention on the left side these categories that we have. So you can get an idea of the breadth of tasks that NSE can be useful for. The auth category is for authorization related scripts, like we see up here the AFP brute force script, which uh, does brute force authentication cracking for the Apple filing protocol. We have default scripts, which is a hand curated set we select to find the ones that are most useful to people and least likely to cause network disruption or to be perceived as attack or otherwise undesirable. We have discovery tests. I mean that's kind of Nmap's bread and butter. So if you click on a category, you can see all of the scripts that are in that category. And so for discovery, we have a bunch of information. If a DBD2 database is found, tell us what's up there. Grab information from DHCP, DNS, HTTP, and it goes on and on. We have the DOS category for denial of service attacks. There's only one of those. I think we only have one in the exploits category for exploits now. Uh, external, that's kind of a policy related category. Fuzzers. We have intrusive and safe categories are two important ones to know. Basically the safe ones, we feel those are the ones you can run with little risk. They're not usually going to use a lot of network resources. They're not likely to crash servers. They're not likely to be perceived as really hostile by a network admin. Whereas the ones that aren't safe that we think do have some of those problems, we put in the intrusive category so that you can consider more carefully why is it intrusive and does that matter to me uh, before you decide on your scan. We have a malware category. For example, Nmap was one of the first scanners to remotely detect the Conficker worm last year and 
the malware category is where that would belong. Version detection, Nmap's version detection engine now has more than 6,000 version detection signatures in it, so we can detect a huge number of applications. But there are some protocols that they're basically designed to hide from people trying to detect them on the network. Skype is an example. And for those where our version detection isn't strong enough, well, we've found methods with NSE with its ability to interrogate multiple probes and analyze the responses more carefully is able to do those. And then we have vulnerability detection related scripts. So this NSE doc page, which you can visit at any time at nmap.org.nse doc, is really an easy way to find the scripts that you think are going to be useful. And what you find, when you find the script you want, you can actually take it a little bit further. We're going to look at a script real quickly called nfs-ls. That basically says if nmap detects an nfs server on the network, you can use nfs-ls to say what shares are available, what list the file names uh, in those shares as well as the permission information. And yes, this is stuff you could already get from running other tools separately, but the nice thing is to have it all in your scan results all run automatically together. And so you find that through NSE doc and then you can actually click on it to get information about that script itself. So the very first link is to get the source code of the script. If you really want to figure out what it's doing, that's where you're going to go. The next is the description of the script. Basically tells you what the script does. You get all the arguments for the script. Uh, we have the wrong script here, obviously. This is the show mount script instead of the ls script. This one has a bigger summary because it's more, more useful of a script. You can see the arguments. It takes like maximum number of files you want it to show, whether you want the modification time or access time or what. You get example usage so you know how to use it. We see some of the arguments are from a helper library we have for RPC and NFS. So you can see these arguments aren't specific to this script but they're specific to a library that the script uses and so they might be useful. You get an output and as you can see the author of this tried hard to make it look basically like a directory listing you'd get from ls. And then you get things like what categories it's in. In this case for listing NFS directories it's in discovery because you're figuring out information about the network and it's in safe because you're not really doing anything intrusive. You're basically using this service as it was intended. So we have a lot of scripts now, 131 I mentioned, and it's always growing. Here's an example of the data behind that growth. We started out with about 20 scripts. It took us some time to get our review process in place, to get all the infrastructure there to easily write and process scripts. But then lately it's just been growing like we can't hardly believe. I mean we've been working four years on this system and had it in Nmap for three and a half, but more than half of our scripts have been written in the last year and I won't be surprised if when DEF CON rolls around next year it's doubled again. So now we've basically shown you the raw basics of NSE. Basically what it is, what it can do. Now let's actually show you an example of what it can do. And to do this, I want to introduce you to a set of scripts written by a fellow named Ron Bose who spent months researching the SMB and MSRPC protocols, which is not something I would really wish on anyone, but <laughs> I'm glad he did it and these 13 scripts are a great gift to the NMAP community. Basically there's informational scripts to just query the SMB server and say give us the detailed OS information including service pack and such, the server stats, the system info, the security mode. We have enumeration scripts to say contact the server and give us a list of users or domains or groups or processes, sessions or shares. And then we have three more intrusive scripts. We have SMB brute which does brute force authentication cracking against the server to try and figure out passwords. And it can work in conjunction with, in conjunction with the SMB enum users so that you already have a user list. We have SMB check vulns which checks for a number of remotely exploitable MSRPC bugs. And then we have SMB PS exec which allows you to execute 
uh, arbitrary commands on the server with some canned ones available for you for things like dumping password passes, uh, dumping password, ha 